With the current situation, I think we all need a break from reality, something to lift our spirits, and animation tends to do the job for me. I won't be including anime in my list this time because although I do enjoy my wholesome slice of live shows or comedies, most of the anime I watch is adventury or thrillery or, you know, sad. So here are seven animated series that have been cheering me up and will hopefully do the same for you. Watch me backflip, watch me backflip, let me work my magic. First up, Green Eggs and Ham, a recent comedy miniseries based on the original book that, despite being one of the most expensive animated productions ever, has not received the spotlight it deserves. It costs a lot of money to make for a reason, an immense amount of passion was put into everything from the animation to the sharp writing to the attention to detail and bringing Dr. Seuss's wacky world to life. The story follows Guy Am I, a grumpy, well, guy who has the worst possible luck and Sam I Am who is the exact opposite, as they get caught up in the chase for an exotic animal, Sam stole, and are forced to work together. The main characters have a lot of depth to them, and pretty much every character is fun to watch, especially the quote unquote bad guys. So if you're searching for a fun, ridiculous show, Green Eggs and Ham is the way to go. That was bad. Moving on. With Peanuts by Charles Schultz being one of my favorite comics of all time and Snoopy being one of my favorite comic characters, finding Snoopy in space was a real treat. Basically, Snoopy gets a sudden urge to fly among the stars, so with some encouragement from Charlie Brown and friends, he applies for NASA. The plot is pretty simple, and since the series is so short, I'll be spoiling things if I say too much. Snoopy in Space actually seems to be more of an educational show for kids than something aimed at people like me who grew up reading the comics, but I do not care because it has jazz. I've been listening to the soundtrack non-stop since finishing the show, so I could say it's my favorite feature, but Snoopy in Space has its own charm even besides that. If you're willing to just shut your brain off, accept whatever's happening on screen, and be a kid again, check it out. Maybe watch it with a younger sibling. Good grief. Next, a series that friends both online and offline have been screaming at me to watch. Gravity Falls. In case you somehow haven't heard of this Disney Channel cult classic, Gravity Falls is a mystery comedy series about two twin siblings, Dipper and Mabel Pines, who stay with their great uncle Stan in a valley called Gravity Falls for their summer vacation. The thing is, the valley seems to have some unusual inhabitants. And I love this show. I love it. As far as I'm concerned, it's perfect in every way. I watched the first season in one weekend and then took my time with season two because I knew I'd be sad when it was over and yes, I'm sad. It had me from the first episode with its lively characters, witty sense of humor, and how much it reminded me of Over the Garden Wall. Although Gravity Falls is much more lighthearted, on the surface. Yes, you heard me right, this show is a lot more than meets the eye and that's the main thing that makes it so special. Gravity Falls is more than a series, it's an experience. I became ridiculously attached to the series and its characters, and if you go in blind like I did, I guarantee you're in for a wild ride. We Bear Bears follows three adorable bear brothers, a grizzly, a panda, and a polar bear as they attempt to live in human society. The show is about their daily adventures and about their interactions with each other. Something you need to know right away is that no one questions that these bears can talk or that they stroll around town stacked on top of each other. We Bear Bears is meant to be goofy and easygoing, making it a perfect feel-good show for this list. Grizzly is the older brother, but not the brightest crayon in the box. Panda is basically an insecure teenager obsessed with social media. And Ice Bear, my favorite, is the mom of the family, the youngest and yet the most mysterious. There are plenty of side characters that come along, and they're all just as lovable. Something I really appreciate about We Bear Bears is that, like the other series I've mentioned so far, it targets a very general audience, so there's something in it for everyone. You're back, Gnarly! Weren't you having a good time? Yes, I was. But I didn't want to miss springtime in Moomin Valley. The next recommendation is technically maybe anime since it's a collaboration between Japanese and Dutch creators. Adventures from Moomin Valley is a 1990 adaptation of the most well-known animated series ever made based on Finnish literature and one of the most popular franchises in the UK to this day. It's never aired in the West though, so it's no surprise if you, like myself, had never heard of it before. It does have quite a fan base online, and that's how I first came across it. The best way I can describe Adventures from Moomin Valley is it's like a Bob Ross tutorial. Unbearably uneventful to some, and healing to others. Add some actual plot and a pinch of uncanniness and you have this show. 
it's a 2 a.m. and bored kind of thing for me, but don't get me wrong, the characters and the world are definitely charming. The story recently got a new TV adaptation that has received higher ratings, but I haven't watched that, so I can only recommend you Adventures from Moomin Valley for a calming, slower-paced fantasy tale. Hello. This is Daffy Duck. Oh, you know, <laughs> I would love to go door to door to help the mayor get reelected, but unfortunately, I'm not a United States citizen, so I probably shouldn't get involved with your politics. <sighs> Where am I from? Uh, Albania. Albania. I'm from Albania. Yes, I am, how you say, visiting your country. So i sorry, but please do take me off your phone list, okay? Adios. That's Albanian for goodbye. The 2011 version of Looney Tunes is a new show on its own that completely respects its source material. If you're like me and grew up with the original Looney Tunes, this series will be a great nostalgia watch. Except it's not the bad kind of nostalgia watch because nostalgia isn't all it has to offer. The cynical, laid-back Bugs Bunny and the self-absorbed Daffy Duck are now roommates in the city and many familiar faces make appearances as well, a few of them like Lola Bunny even altered for the better. The Looney Tunes show has everything I remember loving in each of the main duo's episodic misadventures from witty dialogue to slapstick and the above average animation is a bonus. It even has little shorts halfway through that remind me of silly songs with Larry, VeggieTales, which is always a good thing. The only aspect I could say I dislike is the show's occasional 3D Roadrunner shorts, but otherwise, it honors what makes the world of Looney Tunes so much fun and it's a real shame it only got two seasons. The final series I would like to recommend is the entire reason I decided to make this video. Steven Universe, one of my favorite animated series of all time, which sadly had its finale this year. The story follows, you guessed it, a boy named Steven Universe whose family consists of three alien gems, Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl, who make it their duty to protect the Earth, and also his father Greg. I would say the first half of season 1 is more feel-good than the rest of the series before it really gets into the deep stuff and the meat of the plot. Later on, it jumps back and forth between Steven making new friends in town to Steven barely escaping a space prison with his life. I'll never say this show was perfect, since certain seasons were stronger writing-wise than others, the finale admittedly was underwhelming at best. But the overall story, the wonderfully handled character development, and the music will always be special to me. When I first came across it years ago, Steven Universe helped me out of a dark time in my life with its lessons of self-acceptance and empathy, so there's no way I couldn't recommend it. If you like the first season, you'll love the rest, and after you finish the entire thing, you'll, like me, need something to fill the void. So maybe come back to this list for that. And that's all I've got. I may have already adopted a hermit lifestyle before the world went up in flames, but I'm sure I'm not the only one burning, <laughs> get it, through series after series during their now extended free time. That's why I made this video, so I hope it helped you find a new show to watch. Thanks for sticking around, look forward to more video essays on my channel soon, and I'll see you next week.